Hey everyone. So I'm David Agronovich. I'm Facebook's director for global threat disruption. We also have Mike Dolyansky, who leads our uh, cyber espionage teams, among others. Um, so I'm going to open this really quick and then pass it to Mike because he's more interesting and knows more things. Um, so let's see how this goes. So we're going to talk a bit about how we disrupt cyber adversaries. And in, in particular, the question that we want to try to answer here is, how can you deter a cyber threat actor? And when you try to do it, does it work? We have 10 minutes, so we'll see if that works. <laughs> um, so we'll talk a bit about what our goals are as a private company trying to do this, um, how we do it, right? What is deterrence? How do we define it? And what levers do we have? And then Mike's going to talk about some examples of how we've actually applied this uh, in real life. Um, in particular, the goals here are simple, right? Protect people on our platform from bad actors doing bad things on our platform. But those goals are a little more nuanced than that, right? How do we raise costs against those adversaries? How do we make this, you know, doing bad things on Facebook's platforms worse for them? How do we increase the risk for doing operations on our platform? And then how can we make them change the way they behave on our platforms and off of our platforms to move away from the bad things that they're doing? So when we think about deterrence, right, it falls into kind of two major buckets. How can we maximize the pain on the adversary and how can we minimize the benefits of the operations that they're conducting? And as a private company, we have a bunch of these levers that we can pull, right? We can disrupt the network, like we did this morning with an operation from Pakistan targeting people in Afghanistan and three operations in Syria targeting people in Syria. We can blow the cover on those operations which we did this morning by releasing reports on those operations. We can attribute those operations, which we did this morning to side copy in the Pakistan case, the Syrian uh, Air Force Intelligence, and two of the Syrian cases. And then we can share information. We can share information about the operations with the public. We released a bunch of IOCs, websites, malware hashes, information about the uh, applications that they were using. We can also share information with law enforcement, with policymakers, with folks like who Alicia was talking about to make other parts of society more effective. And then we can share with industry. So some of the other companies that are here, both on the cybersecurity side and some of the platform companies, we'll work with them to make sure we're sharing with them and vice versa so that we can take action on these networks wherever they appear. And then when we're doing the sharing, we can also, what I have here is advocate for real consequences. Note that getting your Facebook account taken down is certainly going to be annoying, but it is not the end of the world. And if much like as we talked about in the ransomware uh, cases this morning, if we wanted to actually change the risk calculus of some of these threat actors, the way we do it is to get them to think that doing this type of an operation isn't just going to get your Facebook account taken down. It's going to result in real-world consequences elsewhere in the rest of your work. Minimize the benefits. We can warn victims. We told the people in those operations I mentioned that they were being targeted. So if you were a threat actor, now your victims know that you're out there looking at them. We can change the way the platform works, make it less likely it's going to be effective. And we can work to catch them earlier, right? As a private company, we can build things like automated detection to look for this type of stuff. So some major items here, right? We have deterrent levers that we can pull. Um, we need to make trade-offs between the public and non-public approaches we can take. And then we need to think about, when we do these takedowns, the effect they have on our adversaries, and then the effect that they have on our ability to continue doing this type of investigative work. Um, and then finally, when we do these public enforcements, something that we've been advocating for for more people to do, right, is Commit to making public your findings on these types of enforcements. Attribute it when we have it and make our attribution standards as public as possible. We talk about essentially how we hold ourselves to attribution in each of these cases. And then actually provide usable and actionable information in those takedowns. Right? So if we have IOCs, if we have information malware hashes, for example, we actually provide that both to the public and to the industry. Um, and so Mike is going to talk through some examples of how this works. Mike. Thanks. Um, so thanks, David, for and I really appreciate being here today to talk about this. So these are two cases that we've made public in the past. So the first one, tortoise shell uh, case from Iran that Mike Scott and our team actually worked on. And then the second one from China, Earth and Pusa, Mike Flossman from our team worked on. So we're all named Mike's to confuse the adversary, by the way, on our team. So in the first case, uh, what we saw, and the, the first one we made public in July, the one in uh, China we made public in March of uh, this year. I can't believe it was this year, but it was in 2021. So Tortoise Shell is an investigation we've been following for some time. Uh, they, were following, they were targeting uh, typically IT industry in the Middle East. What we saw in 2020 is a shift uh, in targeting to the uh, aerospace and defense sectors, mostly in the US, but also some uh, uh, across the uh, EU and uh, UK. 
So what we saw in this case is a heavy reliance on uh, uh, backstop personas across multiple internet services and social media platforms. Um, essentially like a lot of investment into building trust. Someone talked earlier about trust, building trust with the adversary, uh, with the target that you're, tar uh, that you're trying to trick into clicking on malicious links or enter your credentials. We saw a lot of investment from this specific group into that. And we also saw some custom malware developed um, by what we were able to link to an IRGC linked uh, company, Mahak Rayana Fraz in um, Tehran. Uh, it was similar on the, on the China side. We saw some malware outsourcing to two companies which we named publicly. Uh, Best LH and Nine Rust Technologies in China. Um, and we saw some sensitivity to public disclosures uh, from, from this actor. Um, the China actor targeted uh, Uyghurs around the world and uh, people sympathetic to Uyghur rights uh, or the, uh, the movement. Um, and uh, the, the actual TTPs across both of these cases were somewhat similar. So they relied on phishing, um, they relied on social engineering and then driving people off of our platform to compromised or other uh, attacker-owned uh, infrastructure to get them to either enter their credentials or click on malicious links. Uh, what we saw in the second case, in, in the Earth and Fusa case, um, we also saw a lot of sensitivity to um, uh, protection of their infrastructure and tooling chain that they used. So there were some server-side uh, server checks that they would perform before infecting someone with iOS malware that they would serve up. Um, and we generally saw them, as I mentioned, slow down um, when, whenever there was any public reporting on them. So why did we make these public? We do lots of disruptions. Some of them are not public. Um, the reason for these two is, comes back to those two things that David talked about, so effects on the adversary and enabling the community. So on the adversary side, the question we want to ask ourselves is, are we increasing costs? Are we introducing risk? Are we, ask, are we uh, helping them uh, ask questions like, is this worth it, or legal sign off on this? Uh, or like, you know, what are my equities here that I need to worry about? Um, will they slow down? We know that they're going to come back. We will continue to look for them if they do try to come back. Um, but we, we're, we're not, the goal here isn't to stop them. The goal here is to move the adversary into a space that's more advantageous to us. Um, on the enabling the community, the question we want to ask ourselves is, are we helping? Are we adding anything new to the understanding of these actors? And are we helping to harden the attack surface for them by making the users more resilient through uh, increased awareness? So. The last slide that I just want to talk about briefly here is, I mean, the question that we always ask ourselves is, does it work? Is this effective? Um, and so the answer we, what we try to do after each disruption is actually analyze how quickly the actors come back, uh, what they do differently. Um, we try to understand how effective this was or not. Um, and what we usually see is that they do come back uh, with some changes. Um, they do take notice. Um, they do pay attention to what we do. Um, and we look for behavioral changes and time to come back and changes in infrastructure and TTPs. And we have seen that, just speaking broadly, not just about these two cases, but generally, we have seen all of those things. We do see generally more caution after we call them out publicly in how they come back. Um, we do see some self-imposed delays um, and just essentially what, what I imagine happens is some kind of damage assessment on the other side to try to understand how we found them, what we did, what we will do next. Uh, so there's a little bit of friction introduced and a little bit more risk calculus, which is our goal here. Um, we see lower levels of operational activity generally, though they tend to ramp up over time. Um, and we do see at the point number seven here is uh, that personal consequences do matter. There is institutional risk to the operation and the campaign, but there's also personal risk to people involved in these campaigns, and they do matter. Um, so we do see the bad guys take notice um, and you know, respond. Um, and our goal here is to do those two things. Are we helping slow them down over time? And are we helping users become more resilient uh, by raising awareness? So last thing I just want to say uh, briefly is that, we, like I mentioned before, these are persistent actors. We know we're not going to stop them. Um, what we're hoping to do is build a framework in which we work together to uh, create as, broader, as broad of an impact radius on the actor operations as possible by sharing information with the industry, by sharing information with each other, um, by making this public and raising those costs so that we can be more effective in the long run. And with that, I think that's all we have.